Hi there, it's Richard. Uh, tricky on the Startup forums. I thought I'd show you a few of the expansions that I, and adapters I make for the BBC Micro. Uh, starting with the one that Kevin Hogue showed on his uh, YouTube channel recently. Uh, a few people have been asking about them, so I've made a batch. I'm still not sure if I'm going to sell them, uh, but I'll show you the ones I've made and, and how I install them. Uh, I've already been working on this beep because it wasn't working. It is now. Uh, it was a 6522 that had gone bad, so not too bad a fix. Uh, I've already taken the screws out, uh, and this one's got a Watford Electronics RAM board and a, a RAM card, which is the Shadow RAM, I think, 32K. Uh, that you can use for a printer buffer, or the CPU can access it, but not the not the graphics, so not Shadow RAM like a a master. I've uh, already taken the keyboard out so I said I've had it apart anyway. This is actually the prototype of one of the uh, one of the adapters that I made and sent uh, to Colin. This one uh, is actually uh, soldered into the plug there but if you imagine it wasn't soldered in then all you do is you take the adapter with its little pins, put it on the speaker adapter, plug the speaker into the back of it, uh, and then you can either mount that in the reset hole, or I like to mount it here into the lid. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So first thing to do is just to make a little pencil mark on the inside of the lid so that we don't mount the uh, connector too far over and it blocks the lid going down. So that's as far as our adapter can go. We'll just make a mark on that side to show that's the side that it's got to go over the line. Right, so here is where I made that pencil mark and a little more marks so I can know that it's safe to put the adapter in on this side of the line, but not this side, so this side. I also want to put it so that when it's in, the uh, there'll be more enough sticking more sticking out the bottom of the adapter than the top so that it can sit into the little lip that is in the in there if you're doing this on a issue 3 one that doesn't have a baffle uh, I'll show you another method in well I won't bother showing you but basically what I do is I take one of these which is a wedge for putting in laminate flooring I cut the end off it I glue it just inside the lid like that, uh, hot glue it in there and then either hot glue or um, epoxy the adapter onto the edge of there like that, like that. Uh, it's best to take a piece about halfway down so it's got the right thickness then to lift it up level onto that line and because you, you epoxy onto here but this you only hot glue in, hot glue over that much surface area will hold fine. Uh, and the epoxy will hold fine on there as well. Um, just a generous dollop of hot glue will, will, will equally work on there. Uh, I, I do like my mods to be reversible. Uh, you can see this 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 Beeb's already had many mod many mods and some just made a nasty hole in it. Uh, not how I like my Beeb's, but I don't mind if other people mod them. It's their machine, do what they like. All we're going to do here is put a tiny dab of hot glue on the front of the case here, another bit on there, I'm going to put that on there and then just slide it in. I mean it, it's pretty firm as it is but a little dab of hot glue will just stop it from coming free. Um, but it's as I found out already, uh, if you end up pulling the cable by mistake the hot glue will give way and you won't damage anything which is uh, just how I like it. Right, the hot glue gun has warmed up now, so I'll put a little bit on there, I'll put a little bit on there, I'll put that there, I'll push it into place, 
just give it a few seconds for the uh, glue to set and uh, we're done hopefully that's what you can see is what's spilt a bit on the case you just rub it off with the fingernails job done and that's solid uh, if you want you can put the little ring back on it's not really going to make much difference with regard to how sturdy the the job is it just depends whether you like the look of it with the, the ring on it or not I think it completes the completes it a little bit so I just put it on there that won't make any difference but there you go fitted and then uh, when we have our scart lead we can just plug it in uh, which I'll show you it working in a little while Okay, so we'll just try out one of the scart leads I make. They're, um, I wouldn't um, sell them, they take too long to make. Uh, but Cool Novelties have now added the option to have an audio jack added to your BBC scart lead. Uh, that's the one that Colin's got. And the other people I know that have got bought cables from them are very happy with them. I don't know anyone else that offers the audio option. Uh, so I'm not affiliated to them. I don't get any commission or anything for them. Just letting you know because I want people to have BBCs as usable as they can be. So if we turn this on without the audio in, we get the usual beep beep from the BBC. If we plug the, the jack in, we get it out of the TV. So I've got, uh, I've got a menu on here with a little demo program. We'll just try this. Probably it won't come out, but hopefully it will. Each chip test one, two, three, so four, five, So that's the five, uh, TV. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, zero, that's the BBC. Five, 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 this is just running on that machine up there. We're in a bit of a mess at the moment because I'm getting ready for a show at the weekend. Right, second thing I do to my BBCs is I add... Uh, a little SD card adapter. Uh, I made these because I did buy one off eBay, paid about 40 quid for it, uh, and then I noticed the prices were going up and up and up. Uh, 55, nearly 60 quid, some people were asking for them, which I thought was a bit too much. So I started making these. I only sell them at shows in person because I'm not getting into, oh, it didn't arrive in the post or it arrived broken. So I like to only do them at shows where I can show people it working. I plug it into my machine. I'll get the ROMs that I make for it, and these are MMF, MMFS uh, by Hoglet. You can find out all about them on Stardot if you don't know. Uh, since this one's got a ROM RAM board in, we'll put it up here. Normally, of course, you put a BBC ROM here. Uh, on this one, it's, all, it's already got the DFS ROM in it, but I'm going to leave that in because my games don't care where page is. Uh, and I think it's got a utility here somewhere to unplug it, so we'll be alright. I'll just plug that in. That should hopefully be all we need to do there. I'll show you the bit underneath when I've put some uh, keyboard back in here. So, fitting my little adapters, we um, I ship them with a little MMC card with a menu system on it that I've written. I'll show you that in a bit as well. Uh, they go in the user port. They have a little white triangle to show line up with a little white triangle. Make sure if you're doing these, whether it's mine or anyone's, make sure you don't put it in offset by a line or offset by a pin, which you can do if they've got these connectors and not the uh, ribbon cable ones. So make sure it's dead centre when you put it in. Uh, and that's it, that's all there is to fitting it. I'll show you it now. Uh, this is a menu system that I make for the BBC Micro. It's available free from Stardot and has uh, all of the stuff from the uh, BBC Micro to UK archive, or most of it anyway, uh, along with my games, um, which you can see here. I'll show you the Astro Blaster with its, hopefully it works. And well, 
you can uh, watch my uh, video that's got the voiceover recorded off hardware if you want to see any more of that game. I should probably explain if you're not used to uh, or don't know what an MMC device is on the BBC Micro. Uh, it lets you have the SD card, you have well, usually 500 odd disk images on there uh, and what this menu does is it skips around those disks, loads up the appropriate one for the game that you've chosen and starts the game. I also do the same menu for uh, Gotex but it seems there may be a problem with the latest firmware I haven't had a chance to uh, work out what's wrong with that. So yeah the menu also has obviously lots of other games on it uh, and you know, one that's always uh, popular actually yeah is uh, Frogger. few games that aren't compatible with the uh, MMC devices but there's getting less and less as people are patching them up. One thing that one thing I like about them particularly when I'm taking machines to shows is that um, they're very fast and with this menu I can pull a game up for somebody who wants to play something they remember in just a few seconds. So that's a full 32k game. Uh, and when I say full 32k, it uses every byte of the 32k of RAM on the BBC Micro. Doesn't leave any for basic the operating system or the filing system. So yeah. You can find any of my games on BBC Micro or on Stardot if you want to know how I write them, or ask any questions or ask for any any bug fixes. Uh, best place is the Stardot forums. Okay, some other adapters that I make, uh, try to make the BBC again more more usable in the modern age. Uh, I do um, two-way adapters for Sega Mega Drive controllers, so you can have two, two of those on there. The switch on the front lets you use two buttons on one controller, or one button on each controller if there's two of you. Uh, and if you're using one of my games that supports it, you can have two buttons on each controller or all four buttons on one controller. Um, that's an Atari joystick controller, one, uh, one, one joystick. Uh, there's a, a two joystick Atari adapter. I like to use um, original kind of 70s, 80s parts. Uh, and also I don't surface mount per solver, so there's that. What's that one? That's uh, a paddle, Atari paddle controller for paddle games on the BBC. Uh, this one is a PS2, as in PS2 keyboard and mouse, not PlayStation, uh, which I use for um, so I can use this trackball uh, with some buttons I made uh, for playing my missile command game. It also works for PS2 mouse, which again you can use left fire, right fire, middle fire on my um, uh, missile command port and what other ones do I do? Oh, uh, Vectrex light gun um, not sure that's the greatest idea but uh, yeah Sega light gun as well for the for the BBC Micro uh, when I take them to shows I usually pop them down, put them on cables so that I can have this at the front of the BBC while the cables plugged in at the back so I don't have to keep pulling machines in and out at a show and I think that's that's about it. I know I've got a whole bunch more adapters. I can't think where they are or what they adapt, uh, as well as a bunch of joysticks and paddle controllers that I've made for the BBC Micro and the Vectrex. And uh, I think that'll do for today. You're probably all bored stiff. Uh, if you're at Rogol this weekend in Bristol, say hi. <laughs>